In this lesson, we're going to be discussing variables and radicals. One rule I want to make sure we're familiar with is that x to the m power to the n power is equal to the x to the m times n power. For example, if I take x squared quantity cubed and I distribute through the parentheses and I get x to the 2 times 3 power, which gives me x to the 6. So if I take x to the first power, quantity squared, and apply that rule, I get x squared. So this means the square root of x squared equals x. If I take x squared, quantity squared, I get x to the fourth. So this means the square root of x to the fourth equals x squared. If I take x cubed quantity squared, I get x to the sixth. So this means the square root of x to the sixth equals x cubed. Now you might see a pattern developing over here on the right. And really, it turns out to be a pretty simple rule. If you take a square root of a variable to an exponent, if it's even, it's going to be a perfect square. And to find the square root, you just divide the exponent in half. And that's just a simple application of the rule we discussed up here. In the end, I think this makes finding square roots of variables easier than finding square roots of numbers because the computation is not as hard to do. For example, the square root of x to the 14th power is just x to the 7th power. I can even take a bigger number. The square root of x to the 110th power, that's equal to x to the 55th power. So I mentioned that if, it, if a variable has an even exponent, it's going to be a perfect square. Well, what if it has an odd exponent? The square root of x cubed. Because it has an odd exponent, I know it's not a perfect square. If I want to simplify it, I'm going to follow the same process that we talked about with numbers or with constants. I'm going to reorganize it. I'm going to organize it into pairs and non-pairs. If I have three x's, I have one pair of x's. And then there's one x left over. A pair of x's and one x left over. Well, the square root of x squared, that's just x. And I can't do anything with that. Let's try another example. The square root of x to the ninth. Again, the even numbers, x to the eighth, that comes out, and I have one left over. Four pairs of x's, four pairs of two x's, and one left over. The square root of x to the eighth, that's x to the fourth, because x to the eighth is a perfect square. And the square root of x is fully simplified because there's no pairs. If I put two variables into the same radical, say a to the eighth times b to the thirteenth, well, I can split that up into the two radicals and treat it as two separate problems. Well, the square root of a to the eighth, that's even, so that's a perfect square. That's a to the fourth. b to the thirteenth, or it's odd, so it's not a perfect square, but I'm going to organize it into pairs and non-pairs. b to the twelfth is a perfect square. a to the fourth times b to the 6, and you're left with the square root of b. And if we throw a number into the problem, 40a cubed, b to the 4th, c to the 5th. Again, properties of radicals tells me that I can break this apart into three separate problems. The square root of 40, square root of a cubed, square root of b to the fourth. I guess I should say four separate problems. Four separate radicals. And I'm going to simplify each one. Now we talked about how to do square root of 40 in the last lesson. And I could do a factor tree, and I won't go through all of our work right now, but you end up with the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And we'll come back to that. 
the a cubed and break that up into pairs and non-pairs, I get the square root of a squared times the square root of a. b to the fourth, that's a perfect square. So let's just go ahead and take the square root there. I get b squared. Square root of c to the fifth, it's not a perfect square. So I'm going to organize it into pairs and non-pairs. And, and as you guys do this on your own, you may not do every step like I am, but... Um, What's important is that you stay organized and you don't lose any numbers and you just try and you know follow along step by step. So now I've got pairs and non pairs. Square root of four is a perfect square, that's two. Square root of ten is not. Okay, there's nothing I can do with that, so I just leave it as a square root of ten. Square root of a squared is a perfect square. Square root of a is fully simplified. Just copy down the b squared. Square root of c to fourth, perfect square, that's c squared. Square root of c is fully simplified. Now as I look at the problem, there's two types of numbers. There's rational numbers and irrational numbers. I'm going to combine the numbers that aren't under a radical sign and put them in the front to a b squared c squared. And I'm going to combine the numbers that are under radicals and put it under one radical, 10 a, C. So when you have a long problem like this, just break it apart, take it step by step, and try to stay organized.